Hello, folks. Um, welcome to the Type Checking Your Python Project with Pyre Classroom Session. Um, the, we will have two parts to this classroom session. In the first part, I'll go over um, how to use Pyre and give you some real-world examples on how the tool works and what type annotations in Python look like. This will take about 15 to 20 minutes. Afterwards, um, I encourage you to uh, get an open source project or create your own test directory and try to run Pyre on it. I'll walk around the room helping you debug any issues you might run into. And we'll also have Maggie Moss and Jia Chen from the Pyre team helping out. So let's get st started. Basically, the demo will be the cheekily titled Checking Pyre with Pyre. Pyre, Pyre itself has two parts. There's the, uh, there's the OCaml part, which is the type checker that does the work. And there's the Python client, which orchestrates Pyre and chooses which binary to run and does some file system work. So um, could we get the demo, please? Uh, yeah, I have the Pyre check repository checked out. This is available on GitHub, so you could follow along if you wanted to. And everything I mentioned in the talk will be available in the pyre-check.org website, where we have some documentation on how Pyre works and how you can get set up with it. So let's get started. So I have a pre-checked uh, Pyre repository here. If we look, it's basically the master from a few days ago, plus some type errors that I've deliberately introduced. So now, the way you install Pyre is through pip. So let's do pip3 install pyre-check. I have, uh, I noticed that there might be issues with the internet, so I downloaded this beforehand. So it's just saying, uh, Pyre is already installed and nothing needs to be done. And now the way you do a basic Pyre end-to-end -end run is by running the Pyre check command. But before we do that, let's take a look at the Pyre, uh, Python bits of Pyre that do the orchestration. This code all lives in clients, and if I ls here, I have a couple of pi files. One fi file that might be interesting is pyre.py. So now I have a bunch of imports, I have a few functions defined here, and I have a large parser. And as you can see, this is a not trivial piece of Python code. And the way we add type annotations to Python is by following the syntax. I'll enlarge this a bit, actually. So this should help you see it. This just means that we're defining foo as taking x, which has a type of integer, and it's returning a string. As you might guess, there's a type error here. So now that we have this, let's run pyre on this. The, best, the basic way we're going to run Pyre is by running this command. Pyre dash dash source directory client, which is where our Python code lives, check. Now, if I do this, it will go through the type collection and checking phases, and will give us two errors. It's going to say, uh, pyre.py has two errors. One, you promised you were giving me a string, but you're giving me an integer. And two, you promised you were giving me an integer, but you're giving me a string. So now I forgot to do something, so I'm going to remove this Pyre configuration. And if I were to run Pyre source directory client check again, I would have a few more type errors. We're going to see that Pyre is having trouble finding this IPython module, as well as uh, having some trouble locating, locating PyWatchman. Let's look at this suggestion we have at the top. It says setting up a Pyre configuration with Pyre in it might reduce overhead. Now, at Facebook, we've greatly benefited from all of our type, checking, type checks being consistent across developers. And having a configuration just means that all of your dependencies are explicit. So let's run this pyre init command. I run pyre init. It asks if I want to also initialize Watchman. Let's say yes. And client is where our Python code lives. So let's initialize it there. And let's look at what this pyre configuration does. It only has a few things specified. As I mentioned, Pyre has two bits, the Python code that orchestrates it and the OCaml binary that does the work. So this binary is just a pointer saying pyre.bin is uh, the executable that we want Pyre to use. Source directories is a list of folders that we want Pyre to analyze. In this case, it's just client. And finally, typeshed is a link to where type we want typeshed to live. This lets you decouple updates to typeshed from updates to Pyre. Now, uh, remember how I had to do pyre dash dash source directory client check? Now that we have this configuration, I can just run pyre check. It's going to do the same, but now that we have this configuration, it's going to give us the same issues. 
Um, now, let's look at this PyWatchman IPython issue that we had. Pyre wants to be consistent, so it actually ignores your Python path. The way we recover our Python path is looking at what our Python path is. For me, it lives under Python 3.6 site packages. So what I can do is I can copy this, go into the Pyre configuration, and edit it by hand to say, my search path should include this directory. And if I run Pyre again on here, Hopefully, it'll pick up on IPython and PyWatchman. And indeed, it does. Now, the PyWatchman and IPython errors have gone away because we made Py know what our Python path explicitly is. And um, what I'm trying to simulate here is that if you're just onboarding Py on a large project, it might have a lot of type errors because you used to uh, have a lot of dynamic code from a while ago. And it's hard to uh, tackle all these errors if there were 100 of them. So we have a convenience tool called Py Upgrade that lets us actually go into here and fix these errors. So if I do pyre dash dash output JSON and pi uh, pipe this into the pyre upgrade tool, it will add fix me's. Let's look at this pyre.py file again. Oh, uh, sorry. Emacs client pyre.py. Now, this foo function that we had that had a type error saying it was returning a string and it was returning an integer properly gets flagged as having a type error. And same for this what could go wrong function. Now, let's say that we've looked at a bunch of our errors, and now we have the cycles to actually look at this error. What I'm going to do is fix this annotation, because um, that's, that's probably the most legitimate fix we can do. If I do pyre check again on here, it's pyre is now going to complain, saying that these ignores you had are no longer valid, and you should remove them from the code base. So this is a really nice uh, view into the workflow that we call gradual typing, which is you can onboard types to your code one bit at a time. And now the way I can get rid of these ignores is by just deleting them directly. And if I were to run pyre check, sorry, I would get no errors. If you were at the Facebook loves Python, Python loves Facebook talk, you might have noticed that we talked about incremental runs for pyre. PyreCheck does an end, to end run, which is good for Travis CI integration, perhaps, but it's kind of slow to develop in. So if, instead of this, we just typed in Pyre, it's going to say run immediately because we compute this type checking state. And now, if I do something like go into client, pyre.py, introduce a type error here, and bam, our errors are back almost instantly. Now, you might be saying, Sinon, OK, Emacs is great, but I don't use Emacs. I use VS Code. How can I get these errors on VS Code? And do I have the extension for you? Uh, let's uninstall this and reload our VS Code. Now, if I open this project, we're not going to get, have any linting information. The way you can uh, add Pyre to VS Code is by just searching for this Pyre VS Code extension, install it, and re reload Py uh, VS Code afterwards. And now, if I uh, open up my project again, it is just going to say, expect a string but got an integer, the same issue that we had on the command line. Um, yeah, so that's the basics of how Pyre works. And one last point that I'll touch on is gradual typing. So as I mentioned, you might have a lot of code and you're not ready to type check all of them. Uh, so if I wrote def other foo, and just, uh, let's say, x to int, Uh, and let's do like blatant type error. Yeah, because we're, we're in strict mode, it's gonna error here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if I got rid of strict mode, uh, it wouldn't error here at all, even though, um, whoa, sorry. Even though we have a type error. And this is how uh, you can onboard large code bases slowly to Pyre. Once I add the int annotation, then we're going to have an error here saying that int.add got an invalid argument. So if I, instead of empty string, I make this one again, Pyre will be happy. And this workflow lets you um, onboard projects slowly. And once you've onboarded most of your project to basic type checking and you want stronger guarantees, the last thing we can introduce is Pyre strict. So let's do this again and get rid of the annotation. I kind of hinted at this accidentally. If I add Pyre strict to my file, 
Pyre is going to say, we don't want this to be gradually typed. We want to error no matter what you're doing. So now, if we look at this error, it's going to say, you're returning an integer here, but no return type is specified. Uh, you need to specify a return type for all of your um, functions. And same with here. If I do like x is a global dictionary, Pyre should error here. Oh no, Pyre can infer the type of this, so it's not going to error. <laughs> uh, let's see. Other foo. Yeah. Now we're going to say, you're, you have a global here, but I'm not able to infer its type. Please give it a type so that other modules using your uh, module have correct type information. Um, so that's the basics of how you get started with Pyre. Once we have all of our stuff here, so if I do a git status, I've modified client slash pyre.py, and I've also added a Pyre configuration and a Watchman configuration because this is how we track uh, file updates. Uh, I can git commit saying initial type checking with Pyre. And the developers that uh, rebase on your branch can also now get type, uh, Pyre type checking. And if we've set our search pad up correctly, they should have the same type typing results as you do. Uh, can we have the slides, please? Uh, can we pull up the prison? Thank you. Um, so now I'll leave you with some resources, and I encourage you to uh, try Pyre out on your open source project. If you don't have an open source project in mind, you can just try Pyre and do my thing, uh, do the same uh, workflow that I did, or create a new directory and run Pyre on it. Uh, me, Jia, Maggie, and Cooper will be walking around and answering any questions you might have. Thanks.